Hi everyone, I'm NBC10 First Alert Meteorologist Crystal Cly, and it's that time of year, Weather Education Week. Now, I would have loved if we were all in the ballpark together, but this is the next best thing, and I'm still so excited that we get to do experiments and weather lessons throughout the entire week, because this is really my favorite time of year, where we get to combine baseball and science, and hopefully teach you guys something in the process. Today, we're talking about climate change. Now, before we can talk about climate change, we have to walk through some of the basics, and one of the most important questions is, what's the difference between climate and weather. Climate is the normal conditions in an area over a season or throughout years. It's about long duration and what's normal. Weather are conditions outside day to day or over even short periods of time during the day. Weather changes all the time. So now that we know what climate is, the question is what is climate change? Climate change is the change in average conditions like temperatures and rain in a region over a long period of time. Climate change is long term changes to Earth. So the next question might be, how does the climate change and why? Actually, it's natural for our climate to be changing to an extent. However, scientists are worried about the speed at which our climate has been changing in the last several decades. In particular, we're getting hotter and wetter. But why? And the answer, in large part, is due to us, humans. As we do things like burn coal and oil to build things and drive cars, this process releases CO2, or carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas, and that helps to trap heat on Earth. Now, the planet needs to be warm. In fact, the sun helps to warm us, and things like CO2 help to keep that warm on our planet. Think of it kind of like CO2 acting as a blanket for planet Earth to keep us at the perfect temperature. But here's the problem. Since 1950, our production of CO2 has increased too rapidly. As a result, it's like we've made the Earth's blanket too thick and too heavy. So the Earth's temperature is rising. In the last 100 years, we've seen an increase of two degrees. That might not seem like much, but it has big impacts to our daily weather. And our oceans are bearing the brunt of it. That brings us to our experiment. For this experiment, you don't need too many things. You're going to need a balloon, two in fact, one that you'll fill up with air and another that you'll fill up with water. You're also going to need a lighter and make sure that you've got either an adult or some kind of parent with you because you're playing with a lighter. And finally, for safety's sake, make sure you've got some safety goggles as well to help out as we do this experiment. Okay, hopefully you've gathered everything you need for this experiment. I've already blown up my first balloon. Remember, you're also going to be filling another balloon with water. For the sake of this experiment, your balloon with air is going to represent the air in our atmosphere, the air that's all around us. And don't forget, because we're using a lighter, you're going to need to have those safety goggles on. And this might be the part where mom, dad, a parent, or teacher helps you out with the experiment. So here is our atmosphere inside this balloon. Do you want to take any guesses as to what happens when I bring our sun, the lighter, close to our balloon? Might have a pretty good idea, but let's take a look. Woo! <laughs> and just like that, boom, our balloon popped. Now you'll see it just didn't really have the capacity to hold the heat I added to the balloon. Now let's flip this and fill the balloon with water. Take a moment, fill your balloon up if you need to. All right, now I have my balloon that's filled with water. This is going to represent our oceans, the water that's on planet Earth. The question is the same. What happens if I bring our sun, our heat source, against this balloon? Are we going to see a repeat of what we just saw with our air-filled balloon? Let's take a look. Pretty amazing, huh? The balloon didn't pop. You might be wondering why this balloon didn't pop when I added a flame directly to the rubber of the balloon. And it's a great example of how climate change works in our own world. Now, the answer to why it didn't pop is something called heat capacity. Water has a way higher heat capacity than air does. So let's talk about how heat capacity plays into climate change. 70% of our planet is covered by oceans, and oceans can hold about a thousand times the heat that the atmosphere can and about 90% of the warming that we've experienced on Earth has happened in the oceans. That means our oceans are bearing the brunt of climate change without too large of an increase to the ocean temperatures, but even small changes have had big impact. In fact, as water heats up, it expands. That leads to rising sea levels, and that means more coastal flooding. Plus, our warmer oceans are beginning to melt our ice sheets and glaciers, a process that continues to trigger rising seas. It hurts our ocean eco-life. 
and it also has helped fuel stronger hurricanes. See what I mean when I say little changes means big impacts? In fact, it's not just our oceans that are warming. Our air temperatures are going up as well. We're seeing way more records set for heat than we are for cold, and that's definitely impacting baseball season. Hot weather uh, impacts the game because we have to make sure that we're hydrated at all times. Um, there's risk for some injury because of the hot weather, um, but your body does tend to feel somewhat better when you start the game as well because of the hot weather. I do think at times there is a point where it's too hot to play. I've played some games in Arizona where it was 115 and 120 and that seems to be all that you can think about. According to Climate Central, the Phillies baseball season has warmed up by about three degrees in the last 50 years. That means the hottest games are now even hotter, which can be dangerous for players and fans alike. Always remember to stay hydrated in summer when you're at a game. And speaking of hydration, Climate change also means our world is wetter. And this afternoon, Telemundo 62 meteorologist Violeta Yas will be talking more about climate change and our wetter world. At 2 o'clock on NBC10.com slash weather education or on our app, you can find a really cool experiment that makes you understand more about flooding in our area as well as what you can do to be more green and help save planet Earth. I hope you've learned a lot today about climate change and I hope you'll continue to learn more with us throughout our week. Thanks!